Hey up, and welcome to Callum's Corner. Uh, why am I sitting here with my arse pounding? I'll tell you why, and I'm totally ticked off about this, right? I have just walked down to the co-op, or tried to walk to the co-op, and I've slipped up in a steaming pile of dog poo. This is about the third time this month that I've trodden in dog poo, and this time I've actually slipped up in it. Ruined my bloody skinny jeans. I have to throw them away. That's 30 pounds down the drain, and I'm sitting here with a sore bloody arse, and I'm still bloody hungry. This is disgusting. You're absolutely selfish if you've got a dog and you're not clearing up of it. I'm clearing up after it. It is bad enough that there's about a million cats roaming around willy bloody nilly doing their disgusting cat craps in people's gardens. But if you've got a dog, you've got no excuse. You are present when it's actually bloody doing it. It's just lazy. Best case scenario, you've left it there for someone else to clear up. Worst case scenario, some bloody little school kid's gone and trudden in it and have to go to school smelling of it. Oh, why is a little Timmy crying? Well, it could work. Why is he little crying? Oh, because everyone's laughing at him. Why is everyone laughing at him? Because he smells of shit. Your dog shit. That's what he smells of. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm putting a stop to this here and now. If you live in Bristol and you've got a dog, beware. Because I'm going out every day now with my camera. And if I see a dog pooping, I'm going to start filming. And if you don't clear it up, I will put that film online and I will shame you. It stops here. You're revolting. You're lazy. You're disgusting. You're a bunch of bloody. You're a bunch of bloody. You're a bunch of bloody, 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 bloody selfish, spasmoid little shit spreaders. You dirty birdies. Hey, on and welcome, Gallon's Corner. This. My face. <laughs> Poo smeared on it. Poo smeared on my face, a picture of my face, and tic tac stuck into it like a tic tac crappy little beard. It's revolting. Absolutely disgusting. I've been out hunting down dog walkers and eat poo on the streets. And I come home, and this is what I find stuck to my front door. And your dirty little protest has failed. You will not trigger me. You will not stop me with this. It's going straight to the lab for DNA testing. I will find you. Revolting. Oh, I don't even know where to put it. I keep falling off and rolling along the kitchen floor. Dirty little tic tac crap tacks everywhere. Oh my god. Oh, it's horrible. This. Back to the tic tacs again, isn't it? It's been a year. It's pathetic. But I'm taking it away from you. I'm taking away your power. And a final solution. It ends now. You'll have nothing. You want a Tic Tac? I will give you a Tic Tac. I'll move that away. It smells too much. Ugh. I have no filter. I have no chill. I'm the pettiest man in the world. You want a Tic Tac? I'll give you a giant one. You can suck on it. When I was a kid back in school, I was about 11. Friend, little Steve Denton, his dad was a fisherman. Used to go crabbing with him every weekend, right? Fell out with him. Don't even remember what it was about, right? Every single day at school for a month, I punished him. Got ketchup sachets from the canteen and squirted them on his back when he wasn't looking. If I didn't have a ketchup sachet, a little bit of gob, just flicked it on him. At the end of the month, crying, tears, breakdown, victory. So yeah. I'm good. Taking it away from me, you'll have nothing left. Beard going. Everything going. I will give you tic tac and you'll have nothing. Oh, that hurts. It's going. Gone. Tickety tack. Tickety tack. Train ran down the track. Tickety tack. Tickety tack. You won't even see me when I attack. Take it to her. Yeah. This we got this a flower. Tic tac's white, aren't they? No hair, don't care. Now I'll finish it later, you get the point. You've got no hope with the fishing bits going in my eyes. Shots fired. Cut out 
fox, the foxiest fox of all time. You idiots. I am on my tea break at work, right? I should be sitting here enjoying a nice cup of Rosie Lee and having my bloody boost bites. And instead, I'm having to make another video educating you. Well, you bloody need it, so I'm going to do it. How dare you call me racist, accuse me of racism after my past video. I don't think you understand what racism is. You flock over here like a gaggle of bloody gobbly dictum birds. Racism, racism, you don't even know what it is. Idiotic, absolutely idiotic, right? I've Googled it, right? Racism is the antagonism, the... The antagonism, the bloody um, oppression or the discrimination against someone based on the belief that your own race is superior to them. Do you feel discriminated against because I found a black woman attractive? Are you stupid? That's me actually saying I found her attractive. I liked it. It was a positive thing. That's not discrimination. I made complimentary comments about the colour of her skin. I liked it. And you think that's racism. Are you simple? Are you simple? It's ridiculous. It's pathetic. Honestly, and the little stuff about the thumbnails as well. Oh, oh, it's racist. Is you're, you're saying all oh, black women smoke weed. No, I'm not saying that. You are saying that. There's a cannabis leaf in there because the video directly relates to the fact that she was smoking weed in it. It's a massive part of it. Are you talking it's simple? Honestly, I'm at work at the moment. I couldn't make that thumbnail. I'll Google it. It's her own. It's Whoopi Bloody Goldberg. It's her own promotional photo because she is in favour of cannabis and she actually has shares or has a company that makes women's menstrual products infused in cannabis oil. And it's her own bloody photo. And you're saying it's racist. It's, it's beyond belief how simplistic some of you are. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Idiots. You don't like it, right? You don't like it. Write a bloody complaint. You can send it to second shelf on the left up my bloody ass. I'm shook. I am shook to my very core. The news I found out is disturbing and sickening. I finished my work early, right? I've done my painting and left it to dry, so I've come home. My mum and my sister obviously aren't expecting me. As soon as I get to the house, I can hear their laughter drifting out. Manic laughter. Not even through the front bloody door and I can hear them like a gaggle of bloody geese. What must the bloody neighbours think? Anyway, they're laughing so loud they didn't even hear me come in. As soon as I go through the front door, they're... To hide something, hide something from me. I'm straight over there and I grab it. It's a picture. It's a picture of me as a child, a young boy, four years old, and I'm dressed as a girl. Dressed as a bloody girl at this party. All right, there's a backstory to this, right? When I was about 15 years old, I found all these old baby pictures of me. Of me. I look through them and I'm dressed in like pink bonnets and little, little dumb girly baby clothes. So I went to my dad and said, what the hell is this, dad? Why am I dressed in girls' baby clothes in these pictures? And he sits me down and he explains, oh, it's, oh, don't worry, Carol, you're just, you're, your mum was really hoping for a girl when she bought all these girls' clothes and stuff. I said, well, I'm poor, why don't you just buy some boys' clothes? He said, well, she had the baby blues and she just really enjoyed dressing you up for a while. I said, well, dressed up as a baby as a girl. Anyway, anyway, my dad said it stopped before I was a year old. It was all over. I, was, I, I made a very uneasy peace with it. You know, it's fine. I was just a baby. I'm not a girl. I'm a boy. Anyway, so now I'm finding a picture of me, four years old, dressed as a girl. With this incredibly long curly hair that I had back then. Pink ribbon in it. Lipstick on my face. Clip on earrings on me. And I just... Pearl bloody neckness round my neck. I said to my mum, what the hell is this? Do I have to dress as a girl? I was told they finished before I was even one years old. And she's just laughing about it, not even taking it seriously. She's telling me to chill out. Apparently it was a party. She had a few glasses of wine. She'd done it for a laugh. That's how she's entertaining her party guest. Parading me round, dressed as a girl in her drunken state. I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. I was a little boy. How does your mother do that? It's disgusting. It's child abuse. It's bloody child abuse. And I'm saying this to her. What the hell are you doing? And she's still, she's just laughing. She said you loved it. You were getting devil to call you Callie. What do you mean I loved it? She said I got so excited that I had to be put to bed before the end of the party because I pulled down my trousers, stuffed my little winky between my legs. I was pretending I was a girl telling her to look at me. Doing that whole mangina thing where your winkle stop between your legs and you look like you've got a vagina. Everyone at a party's looking at me doing that. That's just humiliating. It's humiliating. I'm trying to get it through to her. What the hell have you done to me? That's a form of child abuse. And still, 
Oh, the worst to come, worst to bloody come, right? I'm saying it to her. What the hell are you doing? And she said, oh, you loved it. You did far worse things when you were young. Oh, God, here we go. Go on, give me the truth then. Give me the whole dirty truth. It turns out when I was five or six years old, this is embarrassing, I used to have a bath, right? And I used to rub my little Willy Wonka, my little Winkle, with a sponge and give myself a little rudimentary erection. And I used to call everyone in to look. I used to say I was a magician. Look at my magic trick. Look at my magic trick. I've made it grow. So what the hell? What did you do? Why would you let me do that? What did you do about it, Mum? said, oh, we thought it was hilarious. We used to call everyone in. Whenever your auntie was there, your uncle, your grandma. I'm wanking off in front of my family. How's that hilarious? It's perverted. It's wrong. Oh, my God. And all the way through this, like, my sister's there. My slutty little sister, Amy. She cannot control herself. She's got tears rolling down her face with laughter. She can barely breathe. She's gagging on it. Oh, it makes a change that you're not gagging on bloody man me, you slutty little enabler. Enabling my mother to abuse. And she's accepting none of it. She said, oh, see, it all stopped by the time my guy, your sister, by the time my girls came. Oh, well, that's great. They all have it normal. And I will have that. I'm the, 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 you beyond fuming. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I'm out of here. Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, this is dedicated, this video, to one special little spasmoid who just tried to trigger me on the back of a bus. You have failed, right? You have failed. Go to catch the bus home, right? Bus is packed. And worse than that, there's someone with music blaring out of their phone sitting at the back of the bus. Three of them, about 15 years old, little kids, little boys, little spasmoids, right? Unfortunately, due to the bus being packed, I've had to sit just in front of them on that raised bloody wheel arch seat. I hate that one. There's not sufficient leg room for a man of my size, but needs must. So I'm sitting there and trying to ignore their music, and I can hear them giggling behind me, right? And suddenly the music stops, and then is replaced with Afghan Dan, Tic Tac business. Well, it's going on. I'm just ignoring it. I'm just ignoring it. And then one of them starts piping up, right, shouting at me. Oh, Tic Tac bloke, Tic Tac man. Do you like this song? It's a banger. Banger, you little cretin. It's a banger, isn't it? Oh, did you get back in your box? Are you back in your box? He's constantly shouting at me. So I turn around and I catch my first look at him. I mean, that was a shock to start with. He looks like a deformed little pea. Stupid candy floss, fluffy hair on his head like his little tea, right? Massive overbite, goofy little gimp trying to abuse me. He squealed like a banshee, like a banshee bitch, right? Don't smile at me, he shouts. Don't smile at me, you nonce, you effing little nonce. Swearing, right? Crosses a massive line. Tic Tac is one thing. Accuse me of being a nonce in public is quite another. We'll go to it, we'll go to it. Oh, you want to sleep with people's mums, don't you, you dirty little nonce? Disgusting, right? Some home truths for you, you little idiot. Number one, you are a knobhead. Number two, a nonce is someone who wants to have sex with children. I'm talking about meeting single mums. It's literally the exact opposite. I want older women who've been left lonely, who don't get the chance to meet people. I don't get the chance to meet people. Looking for companionship, but nothing to do with kids. Gutter, gutter mind. All right, number three, and final home truths for you. A liberal dousing of Lynx Africa does not constitute a shower. I can smell you from four feet away. You stank. You stank of a mixture of B.O. and budget crisps. Trying to hide it under the unlovely aroma of Lynx Africa. Get yourself in the shower, dirty birdie. And this continued the whole way home. As I was getting off the bus, he's still shouting at me, right? Even giving me his name repeatedly. Put me in a video. Put me in a video. My name is... Uh, go on, shame me. Shame me. Right, here's your shaming. There's absolutely no way that you can trigger me. There's no way I'm going to give you a shout out and mention my name in your, your name in my video. Right? There's no way I'm going to give you that exposure. And clearly, it would be the happiest day of your life to go home and see me calling your name out, right? So you can show all your pathetic little friends. Well, when you go home and you see this video, you can cry. Because I've not shouted you out. I've shamed you. I've taken you back to school. You've been taught a lesson. You can sit there and you can sob. Right? While you're probably, probably trying to use your own tears as lubricant while you masturbate, you dirty little birdie. Do it quietly, mind. Your parents are only downstairs. Idiot, right? Christ, look at the state of me. Right, you're probably wondering why I am dressed like an overweight method transvestite hooker with a bloody pink tiara on my massive tentacular head. I lost a bet last night um, to Tom Stockdale, my YouTube friend. He smashed me at FIFA and as a forfeit, I now have to dress like a woman for this video and put a tiara on my head. So this is 
what I'm doing. This is why I look so bloody ridiculous. I left our mate Gav's house where we watched the football. I got a couple of flat tyre in the C3, right? I had to pull over and start changing it. All right, as I'm doing it, this little 12-year-old kid waddled over. His mum was wafting over the bloody pavement with his sister, right? He waddled over and he started giving me a bloody jiff. 12 years old. Unbelievable. It wasn't even Tic Tac, although I bet you recognised me. I bet that's what bloody caused him to come over. Anyway, he went, oi, brov, brov, I'm bloody 35 years old. You're about 12. I'm at least 20 years older and better than you. Do you know what I mean? Give me the respect that I deserve. He said, oi, brov, why are your jeans so tight? I said, they're not tight. They're bloody skinny jeans. They're meant to be tight. Do you know what I mean? I wear them because I'm six foot four. You showcase your assets. I've got long legs. Anyway, I said, you know, they're skinny jeans. They're meant to be this tight. He said, not that tight. Why are you wearing women's ones? They're women's ones. What are you women's ones? Six foot five. What woman do you think would fit in a pair of jeans that I fit in? It's plainly ridiculous. It's idiot. Doesn't even understand fashion. Anyway, his mum came and rescued me eventually. She threatened him. She told him to come and was going to lose his effing McDonald's, in her words. Idiot. Really, really disrespectful. My sister has been waging a sick psychological warfare on me and she's got no idea what she started. Right? Yesterday, I went on the bus, right? I got my headphones out, put them in my ear and it sounded like I was listening to the music to somebody shout or something. Looked at my headphones, right? They weren't my Stinhouses. They've been swapped for this cheap pair of Primark headphones that my niece gave me for Christmas for like a pound. They're terrible, right? I was thinking, how the hell has this happened? I'm really careful about my headphones. You know, questioning myself, right? And then today before I left the house, I checked. Checked there, my Stinhouses, right? And the little rubber bits were gone off the headphones, right? Just the little plastic bits left. You can't even listen to it. Looked all around the house, everywhere. Every one of my little rubber bits are gone. You get like six little extra ones, they're gone. My sister has stolen them. Alright? I've been left alone with my own thoughts yesterday, and it was hell. No one should be left alone constantly with what goes on in here. I don't want to listen to it all the time. Alright? I had to use the most budgety, rubbish pair of headphones I could find left in the house. I'm walking around looking like this. Could I be any more twatty? Look at me, the tic tac here with a pair of cheap blue headphones on. And worse than that, right, they don't even work properly. Didn't even realise I'm walking through the middle of the town. There's also the connection's rubbish and it's playing it loud off my phone as well. Oh, it's so embarrassing. I was listening to M people, like Search for the Hero Inside Yourself, and everyone knew it. It's a gimpy song. But I was just, it didn't matter why I was listening to it. The, the ratings are my own. I was embarrassed because of my sister. Ah, oh, the way at home I had to just sit there on the bus with no headphones, just listening to conversation. I hate it ever since people start recognising me. I just want to tune them all out. I just sit there. Uh, and the worst thing is all the students are back now as well. The uni lads. The posh boy sitting just back on the bus about. Just sitting behind me on the bus, right, talking to his mate. He's, 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 he's saying I think it's that Tic Tac head bloke. And he goes, he goes, no, I don't think it is. I think it's just a bloke with a strange head. Just dismissed like that. I'm having to listen to this because of my sister. And the epiphany moment, I did, I did, I've let myself drop, I've let my standards fall. I'm no longer fighting for what I believe in. Well, my sister has opened Pandora's bloody box. She doesn't know what she started. I will get revenge and it will be dark and twisted. Honestly, if I could find a way to infuse meat with the HIV virus and feed it to my vegan sister, that's the kind of level I'm talking about now. I had the worst journey in the world yesterday coming down to the Isle of Wight, right? It started before I even got on a bloody train. I was on the bus on the way to Temple Mead Station and massive patches of my vision started going, which for me means the onset of a bloody migraine, which is an absolute nightmare. So I got onto the train. I decided to push ahead. Part of me wanted to go home, but I was like, no, I've got stuff to do, you know. So I, I pushed on to the train. I got on there and this bloke come and sat next to me straight away in Bristol. All I wanted to do was to close my eyes and be quiet and try and get through this. Uh, and it just started jabbering away at me. It wouldn't take any kind of hint. I'm sitting there with my eyes closed. Honestly, that's obvious I don't want to talk. But this boring bastard started jabbering away to me about the thorough valet job that he'd done on his car that weekend. Valet job? What on earth are you wittering on about? What on earth are you talking about, you pretentious prick? You've just washed the bloody car. Thorough valet job. How can you think some stranger is going to be interested in your stories of thoroughly washing your car? God, every word he was saying was pounding through my head. It was ridiculous. 
Anyway, luckily he got off at Bath and I'm thinking, right, finally, I've got some peace and quiet. No, it was bad to worse. Out of the bloody fire and into the oil or whatever they bloody say. All right. Next, I've got this lady coming and sitting next to me. And I was right at the front of the train where there's this gap between me and the bloody wall. And she pushed his buggy on and she came and sat next to me. And it was, it was hell sent. It was Awful. All I needed was silence, so as quiet as possible, and no light. All right. And she parks this buggy and just leaves this like three or four year old toddler in it, and he's going mental all the way down to bloody Southampton. This was going on. He was screaming, screeching. It was awful. It was literally my my head felt like someone had taken out my right eye and put in a sat sodding summer in there the pressure was so much and every time he screamed it felt like it was gonna crack bloody open and she did nothing she did absolutely nothing this little screaming snot nosed little thing was just going constantly the whole time and she was pretending to ignore it she was she said to me at one point no i'm not gonna listen to you not gonna listen to you i'm not gonna listen to him You've got to do something about this. He's screaming. Everyone's having to listen to this. I get you don't want to give in to the kid or anything, but just engage him. It's a two-hour two hour bloody train journey. Get him out of the buggy. Of course he's not going to want to be strapped in the whole bloody time. Talk to him. He's your bloody kid. Entertain him. And shove him. Shove him. Chunks of Mars bar in his mouth every ten minutes does not constitute entertainment. Ridiculous. Yes, Miles bars are lovely. They're sweet and nutritious and stuff. But the kid does not need that much sugar when he's unable to bloody move. Honestly, it was ridiculous. All of us, everyone on that train was having to endure this. I was having to endure this. Why as a group are we enduring this? We weren't involved in the bloody decision making. You didn't consult me when you let your bloody boyfriend chuck his muck up you before he bloody went to prison for petty burglary. Ah, if you've had a kid, you've got to take responsibility and look after it. And if you're not, if you're just going to leave it there, if you're going to leave it there screaming and ignore it, you should get a soundproof little cage or something. Honestly, it's ridiculous. The world is ridiculous. You need a license. The RSPCA come and inspect you to have a bloody dog or something. Rescue one. Any Tom Dick or Harry can have a kid. Ah, drove me mad. It was the worst journey in the world. The best part of that journey. The best part of that journey, when I have a migraine, I vomit sometimes. And my best part of that journey was going into the toilet, ramming, ramming my foot up against the door so the door couldn't open because the lock didn't work. Ramming my other foot to try and secure me and then managing to vomit in time with the train. That was the best bit because there was a little bit of peace and quiet in there. Awful. I wanted to make a video about it last night, but after a migraine, I feel like I've had a stroke. Half my face goes all numb and revolting. Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. I've just had the worst date of my life. The worst date in bloody history. Oh, it's awful. I should have known what she wanted to eat in Cafe Bloody Rouge. French. Sandwiches named after penises. Cock, monsieur. Well, thank you very much. You can keep it. Oh, I've done wait though, because it looks really promising when we matched online. And I walked in there and I saw her and I first thought was like, shh. She'd be dull the bloody trade description act. It's ridiculous. 27, she told me. She was at least, at least 40. And that wasn't the worst thing, though. In her pictures, she looked perfectly normal. Normal woman with hair. In front of me, she's sitting there with a shaven bloody head. She shaved her head in between. If you're going to shave your head and go on a blind date, you've got to make them aware of that. Ridiculous. It's like looking at Britney Spears. Pre and post. Bloody breakdown. Was, oh. But I'm, I'm not a shallow person. Do you know what I mean? I thought, you know, just be, be the bigger person. Be the bigger person. So I went over to her and she stood up and her top pulled quite tight on her. And, I'm, you know, she had surprisingly kind of pert breasts as well, like Cox's apples or something. So I'm thinking, you know, don't be shallow. So I sit down to have this day. Oh, what a mistake. What a mistake that was. Starts droning on at me. She tells her she's a feminist. She's feminine at me. Honestly, going on about social injustice and how her last boyfriend cheated on her. I'm not bloody surprised. Honestly, bitterness. Bitterness. Oh, I'm a fun, happy person. I don't like to be around that kind of stuff. So I just had to try and lighten the atmosphere a bit. You know, we had banter, make a few jokes. And I said, oh, look, you know, imagine if me and you had kids. They definitely look like Phil and Grant Mitchell. She's having none of it. She's having none of it. She says that's quite inappropriate, actually. Oh, do me a favour. I don't actually want to have children with you. Honestly, I mean, look at you. You're probably too old anyway. You look barren. 
Oh, God. So at that point, I knew romance is definitely, definitely not happening. I couldn't stand to be in the same room as her any longer than I had to be. Just get it over and done with, Callum, I thought. So I start, you know, just trying to chat, get through the day, just chatting and stuff about jobs and stuff. And I'm telling her about um, when I was working as a care worker, I had this really difficult guy that I was caring for. He wasn't difficult, he was a nice guy, but it was a difficult case. He had a number of different health issues. He was a drug addict and he was also HIV positive. And he was sharing needles with his partner. Um, and his partner wasn't HIV positive and he didn't know that this guy was. And I was saying how challenging it was not to be able to say anything to this guy. And this, she pipes up at me, pipes up at me and says that it, she feels like I'm targeting the community, the gay community and people with HIV. I'm like, what are, you, what are you on? I would have felt the same with any infectious disease. If he had bloody, bloody boring beak disease like you, I would have felt the same. Do you know what I mean? You're just targeting people. Oh, God. Honestly, the world makes me sick nowadays. These feminist idiots going on that. The feminine, feminality, femi bloody farties like their farts don't stink. They do. They do. They smell of misplaced anger. Misplaced anger, you boring, barren little beat. God, just got through the rest of the day with gritted teeth. Waste of time. That's what I bloody thoroughly scrubbed under my foreskin for. Absolute waste of time. I'm irritated. And the reasons for my irritation are twofold. Um, the root of it all is my bloody sister, as bloody always. Uh, she's here. She's come over today, invaded. Uh, and all I want to do today is watch Stranger Things. I've started it. I'm addicted to it. I'm loving it. Uh, and she's come over and she's invaded. And now I can't even get in the bloody telly. My sister and my mum have got straightly come dancing on straightly my bloody arse. It doesn't hold a candle to Stranger Things. Bunch of two-bit celebrities waltzing around the bloody ballroom. It's just not interesting. It's not intriguing, like Stranger Things. And I'm not bloody able to watch... <coughs> Sorry, I cough when I get angry. I'm not able to watch it because they're being selfish. And more than just being selfish and hogging the TV with their uninteresting programmes. My sister is in there and she's openly talking about how nasty a period she's having at the moment. When did this become normality to slip that into polite conversation talking about her period? Yes, I know women have them. All bloody women have them unless they reach a certain age or not reach a certain age yet. But we don't have to talk about it. It's a, it's a, it's a bloody excretion from your body. It's excrement. Your body is expelling a waste product. We don't need to have detailed conversations. Yes, you can say you're suffering with it. You know, when someone can give you a little hug or something, give you some comfort. But my sister's in there talking about the details about her cramps and her bloody clot size. Honestly, it's like me. What do you think they stand for it? Women, if I was in there talking about my poo that I had this morning or something, you know, how large it was. I had a slight burning sensation when it came out because of the curry from the night before. Like, hot, hot, hot. No, I wouldn't have it for a second. They'd say I was disgusting. They say I was disgusting, and, and they poo, and women poo, as well as men. So actually, it'd be more like me sitting in there and talking about a massive spunking that I'd done or something, because that's something only men do, like only women have a bloody period. I wouldn't stand for it, no. But no, but periods are perfectly on the plate now. We need to take them off the plate. They could stop rubbing it in my bloody face. You know, it's okay that you have them. You can't help that. You certainly shouldn't be ashamed of it, you know. But it is gross. It is gross. Ugh. I'm just touch it. Stranger things. I'm so addicted to it. That's all I want to do is watch it. I'm just can't even watch it in my own bloody house. It's pathetic. I'm 36 years old. Need something in my life needs to bloody change. I've never been so angry in my life. I've never been so just so betrayed in my life. Honestly, my friend, my friend, so-called mate has let me down. It's Friday, it's Friday, Friday today. I I've gone to meet my mate. My Best mate, Gav, for our, fr for, for our Friday face. It's a tradition that we do. Whenever we can get away, we go and we have three pints, a lager, and I have three bowls of chips. It's chip, it's just a chippy, Friday's bloody chippy day. All right, so I feast on them. I have three bowls of chips and three pints. So just relax on a Friday, right? We get to the pub and it's packed, it's fine. There's massive loads of seating outside. It's a big place, there's a cover over it. So it's fine. Anyway, go sit down and I'm waiting for my chips, right? And this bloke walks in. Oh, I know him, he's done this to me before. This bloke goes, Trevor, Scouts Trev. All right, he walks in straight away. He's doing what he's done to me before. He's going up at me, he's walking past me. Uh, and he's going, gay up at me, not a up. Gay up in his stupid scouse voice. 
Uh, I normally like the Scouse accent, it's funny, but when he's going at you in a little sing song sing spasmoidal voice, day up at you, it winds your bloody up, man. Anyway, I ignore him. I try and ignore him. He sits on the, him and his mates sit on the bench just opposite us, right? He, he's, he's giving me all the tic tac head stuff and day up for a couple of minutes and it settles down, right? I'm thinking, okay, it's all right, right? All right, Gav goes off for to to go around the corner and have a little burn, but he's. Pophead, he goes to have a marijuana smoking session in the bloody middle of the day, right? Sorry, that was a weird burp. I'm so angry, I'm bobbling away inside. So he's gone off. He goes, like, Gav's gone off to go and indulge his dirty little habit, right? So I'm left there, alone. And this girl walks out. Now, this girl was big. She was a woman of size. I don't know what the technical term for it, but she was really, really fat. We're not talking just a couple of extra biscuits today. We're talking a couple of extra packs of biscuits every hour or something but she has to go and sit on their table because there's no other room now right, outside and they're big tables so she's not too close to them but they're being right knobheads about it as soon as she sits down they'll jump up like she's bounced them up with her fatness right they're bullying her basically making nasty comments so I go over there and I talk to her. I think, you know, I don't stand for bullying. Right? So I go and I chat to her. I said, look, are you meeting someone? Are you all right? And she says she is. I said, well, do you want to come and sit with me, you know, and my mate until your mate comes, if, you know, this bloke's bothering you? And she says, no, she's going to be all right. That's fine. I thought she might have wanted to, you know, I'm getting a feast of chips. I thought she might be interested. Anyway, I go and sit back down and then Trev starts piping up again. Oh, did the fat girl knock your back, Callum? Did the fat girl knock your back? Oh, I'm surprised with you. Gay up. Uh, I've just had enough of it. This girl's mortified and I'm fuming. I'm fuming. So I just say to him, just shut up. Just give it a rest. You're embarrassing yourself when you're bothering everyone. It's like a, it's like a light in a firework or something. He bounces up, right? He's just screeching at me. Well, you what? You What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I, I'm one up for getting involved in it. Gav chooses now to come back. And I'm thinking, right, he runs the numbers. I've got some backup. He's got three mates with him. At least I've got one with me now, right? Gav's alongside me and he starts pulling me. So that's wrestling me out of the place. What the hell are you doing? I'm stronger than Gav, so I'm overpowering him. But he grabs hold of my bloody ear. Like I'm a naughty little child. He pulls me out, grabbing hold of my ear. It's red, it's thicker, it's fat and it's bloody sore now. And it's embarrassing. We get out of there. Like, Gav, what are you doing? You're meant to be my mate. And he's justifying himself, going on about Trev and the stories he's heard. He's a nasty piece of work. He's a nasty piece of work. <coughs> Do you not know who I am? You're meant to be my bloody mate. He's a nasty piece of work. I am dark. I will, I will, I will take a dump in my own hand and I will slap Trevor with it. He's a nasty piece of work, right? Gav's all up for going back to his flat now and just getting nicely toasted and calming down. My uncle Hamish was bang on about pot eggs, right? He was Scottish. He used to say, pot smokers are jokers. They're canny copers. Bang on the money, Uncle Hamish. Gavin is an idiot. I just left him there and I've gone home. I can't settle now. Just filled with bloody impotent rage. And these aren't tears in my eyes. My eyes are watering with anger. Because I'm a warrior and I've denied my chance. Gay up. I'll gay up my bloody ass, Idiot. I even get my chips. Eddie up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, let's get this out of my system quickly because I've got Eddie coming over in a bit. And I'm not going to... He's going to get the anger out. He's a little kid. He doesn't need to be exposed to it. It's not his fault, right? Stupid driving instructor, stupid temporary driving instructor came to pick me up today. My own one bloody ill, right? First of all, he's turned up in a bloody courser. A courser. Man like me, six foot five, and I'm meant to go and fit my legs into a courser. Ridiculous, right? And then, halfway through the lesson, he makes me pull over and he wants to finish the lesson. He says he's uncomfortable, right? It's just a stupid little idiot. Mark, his name was, right? Apparently, I was making uncomfortable with my swearing in the car. It's ridiculous, right? Apparently, it happened on three different occasions. And the last one, it just, it just flicked him over the edge, right? I was like, what? I've just told a guy to get effed. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, I'm letting the anger out so it doesn't come out into my bloody driving. It's good, it's calm, responsible behaviour. And he's Muppet Mark, right? He sits down so you did a lot more than just tell him to F off. I said, what are you going on about? What did I tell him? Apparently, I told him, I think he's lying. Apparently, I told him he needed to F a chicken. And I hope the chicken had AIDS. And I hope this bloke caught it. Which, okay, is a little bit over the top and stuff. But he was pulled out in front of me anyway. And it's only words. Words can't bloody hurt you. Honestly, you're just stupid little moist little Muppet. Just man up, you moist little Muppet. 
Mark pulling me over. Oh, I don't think I can continue this question. I'm too uncomfortable. It's just a, just an idiot. I just stormed out of the car. Didn't pay for that bloody lesson. I've walked home. I've walked home. Idiot. He should be thankful. My mouth is a valve and he should be thankful. It lights off my stress so it doesn't come out. It's when you push it down and ignore it that ends up with road rage and stuff. Honestly, fact, no, I'm going to tell you a story. I've never told people this. I've kept it secret before, right? This is what happens if you don't let out your anger and stuff, right? My sister, Amy, my, I was a happy boy until my sister came along. I was three or four years old when she was born. I was a happy boy, right? Until she came along. And it wasn't straight away when she came. It's when she got to about two or three, right? She used to sneak up on me and she'd bite me or pull my hair. I uh, it used to make me so angry. And you can't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I couldn't go and hit her or anything. You don't hit girls. And I always used to run to my mum before I could catch her anyway. Um, I, and that, that, that made me really angry. And then when I was at school, right, when she came to school, right, they knew something was wrong because I got sent to hospital because I've been tugging on my own testicle in frustration. And it's because at school, I was exposed to her as well. And she was doing exactly the same thing in front of my friends when I was only eight or nine years old. It's disgusting, right? And that's what happens if you don't let your anger out. Because I couldn't express it. I ended up tugging on my own testicle and put myself in hospital. Mark needs to realise that it is healthy to let your anger out. Idiot. Stupid idiot. I hate driving. Now, probably can't see the size of that. For, for you guys, it's just looking like a packet of Pringles. And you're thinking, well, what's monstrosity about that? Compare that to my head. It's not even the size of my ruddy head. They've shrunk. It's about two thirds of the size that it used to be. And I just tried to sneak that in past us. And I'll tell you why they're doing it. Two reasons. Corporate greed and fat people. Spoiling it for everyone, right? It's just disgusting. No warning on there that this packet is now much, much smaller than it used to be. Just try and pass it off past you. They're making a mockery of themselves now, aren't they? Once you, once you, once you pop, you just can't stop. Well, once you pop, you've got to stop because they run out five minutes later now. It's ridiculous, honestly. Maximising their profits, all because and and pretending it's for health, pretending it's for healthiness, right? Because oh, fat people can't control how much they're eating. Oh, oh. well, the joke's on you, Pringle. I'm just going to buy two tops of them now and I'll eat them all. Idiots, honestly. It was the perfect size before a tub of Pringles for a snack. You could polish them off and feel like you had a good substantial snack. What are you meant to do with a packet of crisps smaller than my bloody head? Honestly, and it's just a disappointment. Just a disappointment of it, you know. To put it, you know, an analogy, an analogy for you, right? About 10 years ago, when I was still had hair and I was a bit more handsome and stuff, I, I met this girl in a club, it was when I was living in London, Absolutely enchanting, beautiful, and best of all, amply stocked in the bosom area, right? Went back to my flat. Biggest disappointment of my life, right? Padded bra, push-up padded bra, nothing like advertised. And I'm not saying I didn't enjoy myself, you know, breasts are breasts are breasts, they're bloody wonderful. Pringles are Pringles are Pringles, they're bloody wonderful, they taste lovely. But size matters if you've been promised a certain amount of Pringles or a certain amount of bosoms and then suddenly it's taken away from you. You're going to be disappointed. I was disappointed. I'm only bloody human. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. But from now on, I mean, I bought two tubs of these just because I wanted Pringles. But this is the last time I have Pringles. I'm boycotting them now. This video will make you hate Pringles. Everyone should boycott them this Christmas. Disgusting. Size matters. Idiot. 100 layers, maybe not. Oh, Christ, it's already dropping off. All right, I'm going to get on with it now, I think. You don't really want to watch me stick each individual tic-tac to my head. It's dropping off. It's going to make me mad. Um, I enjoyed my video yesterday, actually. I wanted to talk about that. Just, oh, for goodness sake. I just wanted to talk about the anger thing. Um, I think what we discovered is, yes, I do have anger. Um... As do we all. Um, I think we discovered that that test, the anger test that I took, um, stop dropping off. The anger test that I took was um, seriously flawed because those scenarios would have made anyone angry. Um, if you're not getting angry when the love of your life, your girlfriend has just been discovered cheating on you by you walking past her while she's sucking face from someone else, then you've got something wrong with you. Uh, this is really annoying me now that they're all dropping off. Uh, I've gone to quite a lot of effort for this video, and the Tic Tacs just aren't playing ball. Um, right, let's try it a different way. Let's try it a different way. Let's take these ones off. 
let's take these ones off um, and let's just go with a lip bulb covering of prick stick all over my forehead and then maybe maybe we can then stick the tic tacs to it rather than individually gluing the tic tacs like that's a good covering hey that feels better uh, i might be able to do multiple ones at once now as well hey look we've got it we've got it we've got it that's the way that's it. okay this is really irritating me now i'm just trying to get 100 tic tac Stupid, this is stupid. It's taking me ages to do this, and now they're all bloody falling off. Okay, I'm gonna try the PVA glue. I think I've got some wood glue um, in my toolkit. I'll be back in a minute. We obviously need a stronger adhesive because the Tic Tacs are repulsed by my Tic Tac head, apparently. It's like when you put two magnets together, two opposing forces, one Tic Tac, two Tic Tac, they're <laughs> repelling each other. Let's try a stronger glue. I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, we are back now. I've got a stronger adhesive, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plaster some of the glue to my forehead and we're gonna give this a go. This better bloody work because I spent about five quid on Tic Tacs today. Um, which annoys me because a few months ago I had more Tic Tacs than I could ever want. Um, and I chucked them away thinking there's no way I'm gonna want to eat these little buggers, is there? Um, and now I could have bloody used them and I've gone and given them money when they should be giving me money. That's slipping off my head again. That's really annoying me. I just leave it to dry for a second. Sometimes you need the glue to go a little bit tacky and dry, so stuff sticks to it a little bit better. I'm just gonna waft my hand around it. Um, I'm gonna get seriously wound up if this doesn't work. Seriously wound up. This is probably the most effort I've ever tried to put into a video before. I've gone to the shop, I've bought stuff for it. Um, I'm willing to laugh at myself. I'm just trying to stick tic tacs in my head. Why is it not working? There's bloody wood glue, literally. What else can I use? I'm not gonna use super glue. I'd never get the buggers off. Can you imagine going to hospital or having super glued 100 Tic Tacs to my face? Now I need some kind of toxic, toxic bond breaker to get rid of it. Right, let's try the glue on the Tic Tac. That might work. All right, there's, literally can't get any more glue on a Tic Tac than that. Maybe if I have my head back, it will kind of bond to my head and it will dry a little bit. Um, oh, that's ridiculous, this is not working, that's winding me right up. Um, all right, we'll have a try with a mixture of prick stick and um, that, that wood glue. So I'm gonna rub some prick stick onto there as well and try and make like a glue paste or something. Um, if this doesn't work, then that's probably, I failed. I failed, but I haven't failed. Tic Tac have bloody failed. They should make sweets that stick to your bloody head, it's unrealistic. How's a person meant to do a hundred layer challenge without... They won't stay on my head! Um, oh, I can't think of any other way to do this. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, that's just stupid! Really wound me up now. I wasted like a fiver on this bloody video. Oh, I'm taking a piss now. Obviously, it's not going to work. I don't know what it is with Tic Tac. I don't know why it hates me so bloody much. The company, the sweet itself. Literally, I've done so much for Tic Tac that 10 million people calling me Tic Tac head, laughing at the various versions of my video. Didn't want to talk to me about it. Didn't want to get me in an advert or something. Now, they won't even stick to my bloody head. It's, it's a joke. It's a joke. Well, this should have been the 100 layers of Tic Tac challenge. What it is now is that Tic Tac screws me over a bloody yen. Oh, I'm mad. Okay, okay, new plan, new plan. This was a hundred layers video. It's all going wrong as you can see. Yes, I'm angry again, but with bloody good reason. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this anger. I'm gonna phone Tic Tac, the head office. I'm gonna phone the American company. They're the ones who've got all the power. I try and phone the English ones. I don't even talk. Idiots. Just idiots. Um, so I'm gonna phone the American, the American Tic Tac. I'm gonna wait till they're open because of the time difference I'm gonna phone them. This is your 100 layers challenge. This is it, it's gone wrong because the Tic Tacs refuse to stick. Oh, actually they are sticking. No, they're just gonna wire me up, aren't I? I think they're gonna stick. Oh, maybe. Maybe it did actually just need to dry a little bit. Okay, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Right, okay, I think I might have gone a bit over the top. Maybe the glue did just need to. Maybe the glue did just need to dry a little bit. No, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. There's Tic Tacs buddy everywhere now. My mum's gonna kill me. I better get clearing this up. Okay, that's the end of the video. I, I failed. I failed. 
Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Uh, apologies for ranting away. I've not wanted to do a rant video, but trying really hard not to. I tried to resolve this amicably and it got thrown back in my face, so I need an outlet. Uh, I got called into work last night. I'm a care worker. I had to cover a shift at short notice. Really inconvenient. I'd been filming and I was just trying to edit together my Smash Your Pass video. But I went in because that's what you do when you're a selfless person like me, right? Worked hard all night. Got back this morning, right? Reeking, stinking because it's a nasty job. Gone up to my bedroom to change my t-shirt, right? Soon as I get my t-shirt off, I hear this cheering from outside. I look out there and it's a bloody workman looking up through the window, laughing at me, cheering, one whistling. Peeping bloody tongs! It's disgraceful! How dare you, you pervy little old man! Honestly, I've chucked my t-shirt on and I've gone out there to try and resolve this amicably. Just to chat to him, you can't do this in this day and age, I want to say to him. Who aren't even listening to me, they're all bloody peeing themselves with laughter! Calling me tit-stack! Oh, tit-stack! <sighs> Honestly, I'm trying my hardest to the fat twat ringleader. He's actually doing this stupid little song for the strip on the da 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 doing a stupid little sexy dance. Like, that's what I was doing up there. I'm so mad about this. Honestly, I've just left them. And I, if you won't talk to me, this is getting dealt with in a different way. I'm going to phone the bloody company you work for. I'm going to email them. It's plastered all over your van, you idiots. Ah, oh, pervy little, oh, little scuzz buckets. Just who knows what they're doing with those images? Who knows? You know, that could be going in a bloody spank bank and you're, you're going to say, oh, you're a bloke, oh, you're too ugly and stuff. You don't know that. Look at Kevin Spacey. No one expected that of him, you know. And he's a dirty little birdie. It could be anyone. Could be bloody anyone. It could be going home, thinking about me and spanking one out. Well, I won't have that. If I was a woman, if I was a bloody woman, they'd be arrested. They'd be arrested. It should be a quality for all. Me bloody too. Me bloody too. It's getting dealt with, right? And if the company don't deal with it, I will go out there and that bloody machine they've been using all day. Smashes up the earth. That's going up his bloody ass if I don't do something. Uh, all of my hopes and dreams. I was so positive this last couple of days about this, Sharon. Just blew out the bloody window within about five minutes of being there, right? The guy who served us in the cafe is this Turkish guy. And he's very openly gay. I've, he served me a few times. Nice enough fella. But, you know, very, very much one of the flamboyant types, right? And it, basically, she's homophobic. And more than a little bit racist as well. Unbelievable, like, not, not a sign of this on the last two dates, you know, when we were out and stuff. She didn't mention anything about this, I guess, because there were no, didn't talk about gayness or anything. But it was just disgraceful. And I know I hate social justice warriors and stuff, but I'll tell you what's worse than a social justice warrior, you know, a slightly misguided, whiny little snowflake is a bigger, an actual bigger. And that's what she is, you know. It wasn't just misguided opinions, it was open hatred. And I'm not standing for that, you know. I told her in no uncertain terms how unacceptable it was, and I left her, you know. I'm not getting involved with that. I just wish that I found out before we started dating, I got my hopes up. You know, or better yet, I wish I'd found out in a week or so once I, you know, we'd had some bloody boom boom. Because now I'm still without boom boom, and it's been bloody ages. And it's just, I may as well just cut my bloody knob off, mate and I, and donate it to medical sciences, like the, the most useless bloody organ that's ever been. Just ridiculous. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Uh, I'm ranting at you because I'm not angry at you guys. It's Sharon. The sneaky little spasmoid Sharon. You blazes little bigot who I'm angry at. Oh, disgrace, like. And, and the woman who I went on multiple dates with last week, the woman who had given me hope that I was going to have a relationship and that everything was going really well, right, has been bothering me today. She's texted me twice despite me asking for her not to contact me when I left her after a racist, homophobic outburst. I said I wanted nothing more to do with her, just leave me alone, right? Texted me twice and I didn't reply, and she's just turned up at my house. Just turned up and left me no choice. I went out there, I opened the door, to babbling away at me, straight away babbling away at me, right? Making it out, right? Not just trying to justify her views, making it out like I'm wrong about it. Like I've got the wrong end of the stick, not her who's stuck in the bloody stone ages, like it was me who was wrong. What did she say? She said, you'd understand better, your views would be more informed if you came along to my church. A church? She'd mentioned nothing about being bloody religious before. It's it's dishonest to keep that hidden. That if I'd known she was bloody delusional like that, I would have had nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. I'd go along to a church with a bunch of cunty little Catholics and have them lecture me about what's right and wrong. You can't help the way you're born. That's why I got so mad about everyone tic tac heading me. Can't bloody help it. You can't help it if you're a bloke who's born who prefers bloody willies than minge. You can't help it if you're born black or white or Arabic or what. You just can't. It's just, you're born the way you're born. 
when you bloody go to a church and have a load of old farts lecture me about it. Oh, and I'm not saying that there's no God. I don't know. There might be a God. It might be an alien. It might be the same thing with a different bloody name. I don't know. But I'll tell you what it's probably not. It's probably not Jesus, some long-haired hippie layabout. You know, hundreds of years ago, it sounds like a hippie to me. Cut your hair. Get a job. Stop taking acid and claiming you're the son of God. It's ridiculous, my bloody ass son of God. Ah, oh, the Catholic bloody church. Like I'm going to go and listen to them. Most evil institution in the bloody world. They've got millions of secret archives. There's secret Vatican secret library. Google it. Google it. They've got miles of secret documents. Historically, some of the most important documents in the world. If your religion is that bloody good, why aren't they allowed to look at them? Why are they bloody secret? Why can't you be questioned, you secret little spasmoids? Because you know it won't stand up to scrutiny. It makes me so cross. It's fine for you to have a view, but stop pushing it on other people and telling they're wrong because they don't share your view. You're disgraceful. Oh, even my mum, I had to slam the door in her face in the end. Took her ages to leave my bloody door set. My neighbours would have heard. Oh, even my mum, and she's desperate for me to get a girlfriend and move out. Even she said, you had a near escape there, son. Oh, even she knows. Even she bloody knows that's saying something, isn't it? If she comes back, there will be massive ramifications. I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pee in a pot. No, 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 I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna wee in a bloody wok repeatedly till it's full. I'm gonna keep that pee-filled wok next to my bedroom window. And if she comes to my front door, it's going out the window all over her hair. Worst thing is, she still looks bloody gorgeous. I hate the way that a woman can be disgraceful out of her mouth but still look gorgeous. I just. Ugh, just Desperate for bloody boom boom is the issue. I, I actually had to leave a shop today, such was my bloody rage. I would have exploded like a volcano. Today has not started well. Uh, number one, I've woken up with about... And you see that, about ten stupid little ulcers all over my tongue. You should have one ulcer, not ten. They're at the bottom, they're at the top, they're at the end. I keep biting them, they catch on my teeth and it's driving me mad. Uh, it's so super annoying, right? Well, that's like, oh God, that's how you're bitten it. That's, that's number one, right? I've woken up with that. Like, I've got a mouthful of AIDS. I don't know how, I'm not really sexually active, am I? But it's happened, right? Number two, I've gone to the toilet. I've had a particularly painful poo. I uh, really had to strain to get it out for some reason. Number three, I've gone to pick Eddie up because it's meant to be my day chilling with him today. And my sister Amy has phoned me because she knows it now, what I'm doing. Uh, and she blackmailed me into taking her kids to school again. Unbelievable. I'd walk them all day with a painful bloody ass. All of the both of them and nieces asking me questions. Callum, 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 Callum. Having to talk. Every time I'm talking, it's hurting my tongue more. Uh, it really is annoying me, right? And I'll drop them off, I like, get it done. I'll struggle through it, right? And I'll go to the co-op, me and Eddie, and I'm accosted by the arse of a militant bloody lesbian, right? Just ridiculous, right? And we're in there, we're shopping, right? And there's these three old militant lesbians, about 60 years old, and I've got nothing against lesbians, you know, lovely people, most of them, right? Some of my friends have taken a trip to the Isle of Lesbiana. Some stayed for a little while and came back, some never returned. It's fine, right? But these were militant ones, about 60 years old, short grey hair, makeup that was ridiculous, like some kind of statement, like a retarded clown that applied it. Oh, ridiculous colours, right? And they're shopping, right? And me and Eddie just respectfully trying to walk past them in the aisle, and one of them's having a proper moment. I can't have this! It's got dairy in it! The vegan, of course. A bloody course vegan, isn't she, right? She bends over to put it back as we're walking past, and she arses into me, almost knocks me over with her fat bloody ass. Alright? Now she has a tenacity to cheat to turn around to me and moan at me, excuse me, will you watch where you're going? Watch where I'm going! I'm just walking past you! You're the one sticking your fat ass into my face! Uh, I was incandescent with rage. I had to leave. What chance? What can I say to her? It'll be a micro bloody aggression, won't it? Just a, a normal white straight male talking to her. A vegan lesbian. A bloody vegan artist lesbiana. A bloody Latin name is what she'd be called. Uh, what a chance have I got? I just literally had to walk out of there before I lost my crap. It's ridiculous. And the whole time, the whole time my tongue's bloody hurting. It's driving me mad. I've bitten it! I've bitten it again! Uh, Eddie's going home now because I can't deal with him. I'm going to try and edit my video. Luckily, I filmed it last night. My smash your pass. I'm going to go chill and try and edit that. It's a bag of ass today. Meant to be one of the happiest days of the year. Right? Everyone's invited over. Both of my sisters, you know, the kids and everything, right? Christmas tree's going up today. I take my nieces. I take Eddie. We go down to the co-op. You know, out my own pocket. I'm buying Ferrero Rocher. Big box of Ferrero Rocher. You know, expensive. Best part of a tenner. Posh crisps. Um, you know, just, just not mulled wine. All, right? All out my own pocket. Get back. Obviously, my sister Amy's not going to eat the Ferrero Rocher because she's a dirty little vegan. But never mind. You know, I'm not going to let that get me down, right? So, I say, I'm going to go up the road now. I'm going to get the tree. 
This is when Amy starts piping up, isn't it? About why, she says, why are you going to get a tree? You've got one up in the attic, haven't you? I said, what do you talk about? The old tatty one. I haven't used that in about five years, you fake tree. I'm not going to use that. And she says, what are you going to get then? I said, I'm going to get a bloody real tree. It's Christmas. Apparently, right, she starts blah, 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 just jabbering at me right, about consumerism. You know, uh, she doesn't sit right with her ethnic, ethically, ethnically, ethically, that we're going to get a real tree. She doesn't think uh, some of the, uh, tree should be chopped down. It's not environmentally friendly. Just do me a favour, will you? Do me a favour. I'm confronting her about this, you know. Well, what, what on earth are you talking about? You're a dirty little vegetable gobbler. You gobble, 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 gobble vegetables all bloody day long. How can you suddenly care about their lives now? Apparently, that's totally different because she's got to eat to survive. Well, you can eat an animal to survive, haven't you? Why have you chosen to take a vegetable's life rather? And animals apparently that's totally different as well because an animal has cognitive thinking and it knows what's happening it's got intelligence and a vegetable doesn't well i tell you what she hasn't got intelligence but she's allowed to survive and exist isn't she no one's gobbling her down well actually there's probably multiple blokes gobbled dirty little parts of her down but anyway nevertheless she's allowed to exist isn't she just shagging her way across the bloody country playing a game of interracial bingo or whatever it is she's doing she must be close to full house now judging by the kids anyway anyway and i'm, I'm saying look this is rubbish this is rubbish this is totally rubbish you know and if, the, if we didn't buy Christmas trees, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have existed in the first place. You know, they're not just sprouting up in farms, farmers' fields in Devon, willy bloody nilly. They're being planted for Christmas. If we don't buy them, they don't exist. So actually, we're helping the environment. But no, it doesn't sit right with us. She's arguing back and forth, and in the end, my mum just says, "Oh, look, can I just get the fake one down? It's just not worth it." Oh, they're well done. Well done. Just because she speaks loudest and longest and most annoyingly, she bloody wins the argument. It makes me sick. Makes me bloody sick. And Hey up and welcome to Callum's Corner. Right, this is a warning. This is a bloody ultimatum because I'm disgusted as what has transpired, right? I've just, Eddie is here, my nephew. We were going to do a little bonus video for you today, right? Last night I was up late editing the Reddit 5050 video to go up tonight and this was going to be a bonus video for you, for you, for bonus video for you this afternoon. Me and him dancing to Despacito. We worked on a whole little routine. He's just had his first ever after eight. He loved it. He's all hyped up ready to dance and I'm not going to do it now. We're not going to put that online. Do you know why? Because my inbox, my email inbox, sat down to check my emails before the dance, right? It's been filled with filth. And it's you guys, some of you, not all of you, some of you who have done this. And I know exactly what this is about. It's because I tweeted out yesterday wondering what cook, cocking, cocking, cucking, whatever it is, is whatever it is, is. I was asking what it was because people could say it to me in the comment section, right? Some of you are explaining. I know exactly what it is now. It's revolting, by the way, right? And ever since that, I've, I've checked it and the dates, the times transpire. You've been emailing me with videos and links to videos and gifts of this one revolting man doing perverted things. I can only assume he's like a Kim Cook. Cook, whatever. I don't know how you pronounce it. He's obviously a nonce pervert, you know, and I'm going to show you it actually because it's revolting. I don't even know what he's doing. I'm not, I'm not going to Google him because I did a video on Lion Maker yesterday and Google will think I'm some kind of sympathizer. Listen to Eddie how angry he is. Listen to how disappointed he is. You've done this. Uh, this is what's coming through to me. Into the mouth. It's disgusting. I don't even like it being on while he's in the room. What was his fingers in his mouth? It's absolutely revolting. Michael Rosen. Michael Rosen. It's but don't know about him, but judging by the way he looks, he's at the arse end of a really nasty heroin addiction. There's obviously multiple perverted things wrong with him. Uh, if this doesn't stop coming through to my email address, there's going to be consequences because you're sending it from your school bloody email accounts. Normally, I'm no kind of grass, but if the cooking continues, this man keeps coming into my email box, I will contact the authorities. I made a vow recently that I would not rant and rave just angrily all the time anymore. I made a vow to you and to me. So I will try and remain calm during this video, although it's very difficult when you have a sister like mine, like Amy, human bloody hemorrhoid. That's literally what she is at this point. She is a hemorrhoid upon the arse that is my bloody life. So I finished work now, I finished proper work. So I'm working hard on my YouTubing, you know, I've got the festive period off, I booked it. Um, and uh, this morning I got up early, I was filming a try not to react challenge, a try not to laugh well, challenge, not really a challenge for a man like me. However, however, right, I filmed it, I got up early to do it. Just about to start bloody editing it, I got a phone call. 
documentary people. She's missed her final chance to do the recording. She has done almost none of her recording. We went to have three sessions and she's messed them around every time. They're livid. They're fuming, right? They're fuming because they've now got to work overtime to get extra filming in and to edit it in between the bloody festive period and New Year. Fuming because it's got to go out on New Year's Day rather than Christmas Day now. I'm fuming because there's a bloody clause in my contract that I didn't even know about and I'm now losing 20% of the documentary fee. And will she give that? Will she pay for that? You know, it was equals equals to documentary fee split between all four members of the family. Will she give it back? No, blind bloody ass. Will she selfish little skit? Anyway, so I'm very angry about this and it's cost me because I was too cross to edit my bloody try not to laugh challenge. You know, it was with extreme forfeits as well. Um, but I mean, it, it was too easy. So I'm just going to scrap that. So it's cost a video for the whole bloody corner. You know, it's cost a, a late documentary, you know, on Christmas Day. I've got nothing now, although I will make it up to you. You know, you will have a routine or something. Me and Eddie doing our Despacito dance instead while we're waiting. Um, but it's just, it's cost everyone. Uh, so I phoned her. I phoned her repeatedly. 18 bloody times I phoned her and she didn't pick up or she just rejected it and went to voicemail. And she's got the most annoying voicemail in the world. Oh, hello. Hello. Please feel free to leave me a message as long as you're a companion passionate and caring human like oh get in the sea you're bloody vegan not a saint idiot ah oh, anyway left her a message every bloody time nothing nothing back just didn't bloody care until about 15 minutes ago i got a text message from her a text message that's all i read apparently it's just a dismissive text saying oh we'll talk about it tomorrow i'm popping over to see you guys what the, just, i'm dismissed you know like i'm a bloody carvery placed in front of a vegan you know, like, I, and, and, you know, that's a good analogy because I'm carvery delicious. No, it's not a good analogy. But that's exactly what I felt like. Like, something that should be loved, something that should be nice, just dismissed for no bloody reason. Ridiculous. And I'm so cross now, I don't even know whether I can do my second video that I was meant to do later today. My bloody dramatic reading to Michael Rosen. You know, my favourite childhood book. You know, I feel cross and that shouldn't be the way you go into something like that. Welcome to the day my life basically turned into a steaming pile of shit. I'm hoping that I've consumed enough alcohol now to get through this without having a stroke. So angry I am about this. Christmas is cancelled now. It's been replaced by war. And it's one that I'm going to be victorious in. I tell you, I will win this. My sister, Amy, is my sister. I don't doubt she's even human at this point. Finally, she's come over after weeks of swerving calls and being, you know, uncontactable. She turns up. Turns up, but she's not alone, right? She's accompanied by this this indeterminate mess of a creature uh, that I later ascertained was a woman called Meadow. Meadow, my ass, bloody poncy field. All right? Absolute, absolute stereotypical hippity hipster. Right? Ridiculous tie-dye clothes on, the lot of crappy dreadlocks on a white woman. It just looped and smelt like a compost heap, honestly. It was just a joke, right? Pair of them. Take us into the living room, sitting us down, chatting to us, right? My sister, the reason this has all gone on, she's been avoiding us, didn't want to be filmed, is she's been cheating on her husband. Uh, no surprise, no surprise there. We know she's an absolute slutty slot, right? But I'll tell you what is a surprise is she's cheating on her with Meadow, with a woman. This is a new one, isn't it? This is a bloody new one, right? And apparently she's leaving her husband. Right? And we're trying to talk to her about this because she claims that her husband is the father of two of her kids, right? And I believe her, for one of them anyway. Um, and she is, you know, it's a massive decision. It's a massive decision. Of course we're going to talk to her about it. And the pair of them start squawking like a pair of demented bloody parrots. Apparently she can't be questioned over. It doesn't count as cheating because it's some of the opposite. Says, what is just ridiculous, all this crap they're coming out with? She needs to be free to explore her sexuality. Oh, I'll tell you what's happened there. Let's be honest. Let's be bloody honest about this. She's explored every single cock in a bloody 200 mile radius and there's no one left to cheat with. So she's had to move to the Isle of Lesbiana. That's what's happened, isn't it? All right. Anyway, anyway, the pair of them, right? This, is, this isn't it all. This isn't all of it. Right? She's moving out tomorrow and she wants to move back here with her kids at Christmas time. I'll have to be putting up with that because right, she needs her headspace to get away from him and, you know, work everything out, work everything out. My ass. All right, so it's massively inconvenient for me. I'm going to have that going on in my house. Oh, right? And this is, this is not even the worst of it. Not even the worst of it, right? There's a dirty cherry upon this whole filthy little cake of a situation. This meadow, who's apparently her soulmate, right, has got even stronger views than her. They're sitting us down and talking about how they need to be together on Christmas Day, right? And I can kind of understand she wants the moral support. Apparently it'll be too sad, you know. But apparently they can't cope with having meat 
on Christmas Day. They can't be comfortable with it, right? It, it, it's ripping my mind boggles. I'm boggles and I'm going mental over this. I'm like a volcano with the cap has finally come off it. You know, there's no way I'm giving up my turkey to burn all the bloody trimmings. Christmas Day is about food. I've lost a stone recently and I plan to put it all back on this week. Right? And uh, uh, no, she's having none of it, having none of it, right? Apparently there's been too much pain and suffering in their life recently. Well, you've caused it! You've caused it with your filthy little actions! But now it's going to be impacted onto us, right? Because she's turned on the waterworks. It's meadow. It's meadow. is one of those filthy work dodging, soap shy little hipsters, hippies, right? Who doesn't even live in a house, she lives in a van. A van! On a site, a site, a traveller's site, right? Pseudo hippie traveller's site. And if they can't come over, if she can't come over and do this on Christmas Day, they won't be comfortable if we're eating me. My sister is going to take her kids to this van on Christmas Day. Poor little kids shivering away in a cold van. All right, and my mum's giving in. My mum's weakling that she is. And I can't even blame her. She's a woman. It's, you know, they're emotionally weak. It's what they do, you know. It's, it's, it's not they're to be pitied, if anything. You know, you can't judge them for it. Uh, she's giving in. She's giving in. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Christmas Day. We're going to have that on Christmas Day. I'm going to be eating, what, a roasted nut on Christmas Day. What? The pigs in blankets! Pigs in blankets! What am I gonna have? What's the vegetarian version of a pig in a blanket? Bloody. What's the pig? Broccoli! Broccoli wrapped in a cabbage leaf! That's gonna replace a succulent sausage wrapped in gorgeous bacon! Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? You've got a tiny oven, not gonna be able to cook mine as well, and if they're gonna take their kids away, what the hell choice have I got? I'm gonna have to clear out or eat a roasted nut. If I'm here, I will spoil it for them. I will, if I'm gonna have their bloody veganism enforced on me, you know, I will enforce my meat on them. I will make them, I will, they will deal with it. I will spoil it. I could be the pettiest man in petty town, honestly. I will sing my anti-vegan song. Yeah, I've got an anti-vegan song. I wrote it a couple of years ago. I never sing it now. I don't want to offend people, but I will sing it on Christmas Day while they're trying to tuck it into their roasted nut. Oh, little vegan, did you weep? Did you weep? When I ate your sheep, did you weep? I've got loads of verses. Did you cry when I ate chicken pie? I've got a chorus and the breed and the colour and the name don't matter. I eat meat. I eat meat. Well, I won't be eating meat. I'll tell you what, if I can't eat meat, I will eat this whole situation. I will eat this war. I will welcome cold detachment into my life for what used to be my sister. I will turn my heart to stone and I will win. I will be victorious in this. I will get her vegan children to one side and I will feed them chocolate. She says they've been given a choice about being vegan. She's explained. Well, let's see how strong their convictions are when Uncle Callum is offering them bloody dairy milk family sized bars behind your back. This is not over. This is not over by a long shot.